Hi YouTube friends, it's Chrissy from firstdayofhome.com. Today I'm sharing several different fall crafts that are great for decorating your home on a budget this season. And these will be good from now all the way through Thanksgiving. So let me know at the end which one turns out to be your favorite. I definitely have some that are my favorite. If you're new to my channel, I'm so glad you're here. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below and then ring the bell to get notified every time I post on YouTube. Now let's go ahead and get started. The inspiration for my first project came from a trip to my local craft store. They had all of these cute stencils for making coconut mats, and I have been wanting to do a layered mat for my front porch. So I decided to go ahead and pick up the coconut mat, but I wanted to make my own stencil. So I used my Silhouette Cameo, and I have an older machine, so it took a little bit of trial and error, but I ended up cutting this adorable design that I actually showed you in my last Halloween video, and I decided to repurpose it a little bit for my little fall mat. Now I've done a lot of stenciling projects in the past, but I've never used this stencil film before. So I decided to give it a try and I will say it was a little bit tricky. I might suggest using just regular vinyl or heat transfer vinyl to transfer your design. So I had to kind of manually put this on here. Now you can use transfer tape and I've done that before on projects, but it's still going to be tricky to get this particular stencil film to stick to the coconut mat. So doing it by hand just turned out to be the best way and I used painter's tape just to make sure that it stayed in place. Now the thing to remember about stenciling is you want a hard bristle brush and you need to keep the motion straight up and down. So I'm pouncing in between the letters. I'm not rubbing it in. I'm not doing a paintbrush motion. And I'm also using these small pins to hold the design in place in those spots where I'm worried about the paint bleeding. And that really worked out pretty well for this doormat. Now, even though I had to make some little hacks to get this stencil to work on this particular doormat, you might remember when I made my farmhouse sign that's reversible. I used vinyl letters for that project, but I could have easily stenciled it instead, and this kind of film would work perfectly for that type of project because it would stick to the wood. You might also notice that if you watched my Halloween video, this is the same design as my Hello Pumpkin wooden sign. So I like to repurpose the same designs. I'm gonna link that design again below if you're interested in buying it. And I'll show you even a third way that I repurposed it later in this video. So after three coats of paint, it's ready for the big reveal. And I was so nervous to pull this up because I'm always worried about the paint bleeding. It's not the type of project where you can just touch up if you go out of the lines. It's kind of done once you paint it. But the good news is, as I'm pulling this up, I can tell that the lines are pretty crisp. They're pretty clear. I, I really am impressed with how this stencil worked out because I thought it was going to be really challenging, but woo, it turned out just right. So the final step in sealing our project is just spraying on a nice coat of this shellac. It's great for craft projects. You can also use a polyurethane spray, but I will link to this in the description box below. To complete the layered look, I found this adorable buffalo plaid rug and decided to put it underneath my doormat. For my next fall porch DIY, I decided to take a carvable pumpkin and add a little monogram to the front. So remember how I said I was going to use that same design file again? Well, here it is. I used the little branch on my Hello Pumpkin sign to design my own monogram. And I'm gonna start by flipping over the piece of paper that I printed on and just sketching with a pencil. Now, if you haven't seen this technique before, it's really easy and quick and cheap to be able to stencil on or transfer a design to something. You can do this for wood signs, you can do this for just about any craft project. And I'll show you in a second how it works, but just start by scribbling on the back of your design and then you're going to apply it to the pumpkin. And I'm trying to find the center where it's not gonna be right on a seam, it's going to be a pretty side of the pumpkin that I'm going to carve. And now I'm just tracing the front of the design and this is transferring that pencil on the back to the pumpkin and I'll show you in just a minute what that looks like. Mm -hmm. 
Now for the letter of the monogram, I use some of my awesome fall fonts that I have on my website. They are all free to download and I'll put a link in the description box below. Now I do wanna warn you, I learned the hard way that you need to really pay attention to the little holes in the letters because when you're carving, if you carve out the hole, then you kinda of lose your letter and I'll explain exactly what I mean in just a minute. So you can see our design transferred quite nicely onto the pumpkin and now I'm just gonna carve a little hole in the bottom so that we can put a candle inside. Now of course you don't wanna use a real candle with these pumpkins because they are flammable and speaking of flammable, I decided to give this tool a try. Plaid Crafts was nice enough to send me this wood burning tool, but based on this experience, although I have seen other people use this for these types of pumpkins, I would not recommend using it based on my experience because it does cause a lot of smoke and I just got really uncomfortable with the amount of burning that was taking place. So I'm just showing you here, this is an option, adult supervision required, please. Um, but I ended up resorting to just using a craft knife in the end because it was just a little simpler. And I actually think for carving the design, it's better to use a craft knife where you have more control and can be a little more precise. So we got the job done, carved out the bottom of the pumpkin and now I can remove the tags and begin carving my design. Now I won't make you watch all of the gruesome details of carving this pumpkin because it does take a little bit of time and patience. But honestly, if you've ever carved a design in a real pumpkin, it takes patience too. So it's kind of like that. And you remember those holes I told you about? This is what happens when you don't think about those in advance. I ended up carving out the hole in the top of the bee. But before I made the mistake on the bottom of the bee, I left a little space right here where the pumpkin could connect and now you see why it's important not to cut all the way through that because I would have lost my bee. So I fixed the problem in the end, but just think about your design before you start carving. Now I'm ready to put my fall porch together and I have some mums which haven't quite opened up yet, but I did get some real pumpkins to add to the porch and I like to layer them so that they're kind of on different heights and I really think it came together pretty nicely. Let me know what you think in the comments. Now we're gonna take things indoors with a beautiful pumpkin arrangement that you can use all the way through to Thanksgiving. So I started with these flowers from the grocery store and decided to use another carvable pumpkin. This time I decided to go with a white faux pumpkin and I'm just gonna skip that burning step and go straight to the X-Acto knife to cut out the top of my pumpkin this time. And then I'm using a three color combination to add some dimension to this pumpkin. I like to paint in the creases with my white faux pumpkins just to make them look a little more realistic, a little more rustic farmhouse, and you can see it really adds a nice effect. Now for the inside of the pumpkin, I'm using this wet floral foam, and I will link to it in the description box below. I'm cutting it down to size just to make sure it fits perfectly inside the pumpkin. And then I'm going to soak it in a container. First, I add some flour food to a Tupperware or any other kind of dish. And that way, when you put the floral foam in, it will absorb that water. I'm gonna soak it about one or two minutes. And while that's soaking, I can cut my stems, always at a 45 degree angle. And I'm ready to start arranging. But before I do that, I'm going to take a plastic Ziploc bag or any other food storage bag and just cut it down a size to make sure it covers the inside of the pumpkin just to prevent leaking. You can also do this with a real pumpkin, by the way. And then you're ready to start arranging. I usually start with the same types of flowers and that way I can put them in opposite directions and just kind of fill in wherever it looks like it needs some different colors. I really like this bouquet with the different textures and fall colors and I think it turned out pretty well. Let me know what you think and if you plan to try this project. Thank you. 
Now I couldn't do a fall crafting video without some dollar store pumpkins. So I picked up these little orange goodies earlier this season and I'm going to start by taking off the stems. And then I always like to base coat these to cover up that bright orange. And if you've followed me for any amount of time, you know that this is my go-to paint for base coats. It's just a simple chalk paint. It's actually called sheepskin. I'm gonna put it in the description box below if you're interested. I use this all the time and it just gives great coverage. It dries quickly. And you know I love a good Mod Podge project. So I decided to use a technique I actually used a few years ago. I'm taking a 12 by 12 piece of scrapbook paper. You can buy these in bundles. And I just ripped several pieces of it so I can create a mosaic pattern on my pumpkin. Now I did this a couple of years ago with more of a farmhouse style, but I never made a video of it. So I thought, you know, I really need to share this because it's a fun, different technique that you can use. Usually I use napkins for Mod Podge or decoupage or sometimes scrapbook paper. So this is kind of a nice technique that gives sort of a broken glass look. And depending on what kind of scrapbook paper you use, it can really match your decor in a unique and different way. So what you'll notice about the way I'm applying these strips is I put a little bit of Mod Podge down, then put the strip on, then immediately put some more Mod Podge on top. Usually you wait to do the top coat of Mod Podge, but in this particular situation, you have to keep coating it so that it will all stick together. Now toward the end, one thing I learned with this solid deep color scrapbook paper is the little white rips would show up and then I'd have to cover those up. So I ended up just cutting pieces at the end so that the lines would be nice and sharp. And then just add a little bit of glam factor. I cut out this gold scrapbook paper in the shape of a couple of leaves and used a real pumpkin stem to attach to the top. And I think it turned out so cute. Let me know what you think in the comments. Now for another bonus design, I just had to share this other decoupage paper with you. Oh my gosh, I fell in love with it. I had been given this paper as a set of three for Christmas and I just don't know why I haven't used it until now. I've done a lot of decoupage with napkins and done all kinds of things with scrapbook paper, but I've never used real decoupage paper. And I think this is just gorgeous for fall and has so many possibilities. So I'm just gonna start by cutting out the design. I like to kind of go around the main designs and just make a few little cuts so that I have only the image that I want to apply. But you'll see in a minute, you might have to make some more cuts as you go, which is totally fine. I just think this paper is so delicate, but so much easier to work with than napkins because it doesn't rip as much. It's dainty and delicate, but yet it's strong too. It won't rip and it's not so thin. It doesn't stick to your fingertips as much. I just love it. So I'm linking this below. You can check it out if you want. It comes in a set of three and you will see me use this a lot more in future tutorials. Now with this kind of paper, we're going to do something slightly different than the last pumpkin. I'm going to start the same way by applying a thin coat of Mod Podge to start. And then I'm going to start with my first sheet here. It doesn't matter which one you wanna choose. And I like to start at the top or just on an edge so that you can cut these little cuts as you go. And that way you can overlap and you won't get as many wrinkles. So I'm cutting to kind of work with the paper and prevent wrinkles. Wrinkles aren't bad, it's a shabby chic look anyway, so it doesn't matter if you have some wrinkles, but I like to get it as smooth as I can. And then I'm going to continue layering, but I'm not going to put Mod Podge on top of my first layer here. I'm just going to put Mod Podge on the next space where I'm applying my next design. At the very end, I'll apply a top coat of Mod Podge, but first I wanna get the whole design on here. After applying all of my design, I waited about 20 minutes before doing a top coat of Mod Podge, and this just seals your design, it protects it a little bit, and leaves you ready to add some stems and some other cute little embellishments. I had some cute farmhouse ribbon left over from a burlap wreath that I did, so I decided to add this as almost like little leaves on the pumpkin and give it more of a shabby chic farmhouse feel. 
I'm using Gorilla Glue for my hot glue gun this time because it's it works so much better. I don't know why I haven't been using this before. And I did pick up some awesome <laughs> silicone fingertips so I won't burn myself anymore. You've probably seen me burn myself in prior videos. So I'm done with that phase. <laughs> I'm using these now to be a little safer when I craft. And then of course I have my real pumpkin stem that I'm adding and a cute little string of pearls that I think give it such a feminine feel. I think these look just so adorable. And to top it off, I'm adding just a sweet little white flower that I picked up at Michael's. Let me know in the comments if you think you're going to try making these sometime this fall. And now for one of my favorite fall crafts, velvet pumpkins. I picked up this velvet and got the idea for this tutorial from one of my closest blogging friends, Julie at My We Abode. I'm actually going to link to her tutorial on her blog in the description box below. To get started, all you'll need is any kind of circular object. I'm just using a plate from our kitchen and I'm going to trace the pattern onto the backside of the velvet and then cut my pattern out. You can choose any kind of size plate depending on what size pumpkin you want. This is a salad plate, so it makes for a fairly small pumpkin that'll fit in the palm of your hand once you cinch it up and fill it. So I'm just going to cut my fabric. You really don't have to worry about it fraying. This type of fabric stays together really nicely. And once you have your circle cut, you'll just start by doing a basting stitch all the way around. So it's a very loose stitch. You don't need a sewing machine. This is really just best done by hand. And you'll keep going around in a circle about maybe a quarter inch to a half inch away from the edge. So you'll give yourself a little room to cinch it up at the end. You'll start by filling it with a little bit of rice just to give it some weight and then use a combination of foam and polyfill. I had this polyfill hanging around from when I made a pretend campfire for my two boys and so I have a huge bag of it. And you want to fill it as much as you can, even more than you realize. You can also put a little piece, a few little pieces of foam inside to give it a little more character and shape. You know, you don't want it perfectly round. You want to give it a little bit of some bumps here and there to make it look a little more realistic. And as you cinch, you can still add more filling to make sure it's nice and fluffy. Once you feel like you have filled it to the max, you can start to close it up. I like to make one little knot before I begin completely closing up the pumpkin and this just holds it in place so it doesn't unravel on you. And then you're just going to start closing the opening here by sewing across and eventually it will start to cinch close just like a little drawstring purse. Don't forget, Julie has a full written tutorial. If you would like to take your time with this project, go visit her blog, the link's below. And the final most important piece, in my opinion, of this project is adding a nice real stem. Check it out, make sure you have it in the spot where you want it, and then use this Gorilla Glue, hot glue, to glue it in place, and I promise you, it's not gonna go anywhere. Now, if you want to add a little more frilly flair to your pumpkin, I decided to see what it would be like to add some feathers to this little white one. I picked this up at Michael's and you can just buy the little feather uh, pick and cut off the stem there. And then again, I'm using a real pumpkin stem. I like to save these from year to year, or you can also dig at the bottom of the bin at the grocery store and you'll probably find some broken stems down there that you can just take off their hands. So this is what the finished pumpkin looks like with feathers. I think it's super cute. Okay. 
So I'm dying to know, which of these fall crafts was your favorite? I think mine is the doormat and the velvet pumpkins, but leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. You can also tag me over on Instagram at first day of home and follow for more crafts and DIY projects. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. And I'm also going to leave a few more videos that I think you might enjoy over here. I'll see you next time.